Today's topic is the buyer's journey. Uh, welcome to the Marketing Hub. I'm delighted to say we have Lisa McPhillips from Dynamic Marketing back again, and she's going to talk to us about that. Hi, Lisa. Hello, Paul. How are you doing today? Not too bad. Not too bad. Technical issues aside, Lisa. Technical issues aside. I know. I think it's one of those days, Paul. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those days. We, we, we'll get there. We'll get there. So, Lisa, can you tell us about uh, the buyer's journey? Sure. So the buyer's journey uh, sounds very technical, but it's really the different stages that your customer or your client will go through from first hearing about you to buying from you to then hopefully advocating from you. And it's very important as a business that you're aware of that journey, because if, for example, you try selling your product or service too early on in the journey before anybody even really knows about you, then maybe people aren't comfortable buying from you. Equally, if you don't ask for a sale when the time is right, you could be missing a trick. So at a very high level, you want to bring your customers or your clients through awareness. So knowing what you sell, what makes you different from all the rest. Consideration, why should I as a customer buy from you as opposed to anybody else? And this is where your testimonies will come into play. Decision making then, once somebody decides to buy from you as a business, make it as easy as possible for them, really bring them through a very easy process. And then hopefully advocacy. You know, once um, the experience is great, we all know as consumers, as buyers, we will then spread the word and we will actually work on your behalf and, and promote you within our cohort. Yeah, like that's that's what all businesses want. We want those advocates out there. And and how long uh, would this buyer's journey take? I, I suppose it's, it varies from business to business, does it? Do you know what it really does? And I mean, if you think about it yourself as a consumer, social media has really truncated the process as well. Because, for example, you could be sitting down of an evening, flicking through your social media feed. You see a fabulous pair of red shoes. You're like, oh, my gosh, that's wonderful. You click on the website, they're 30, 35 euros. You're thinking, I don't really know that brand, but you know what? I'm going to take a punt. They look gorgeous. And you buy them versus then the higher price ticket items may take that little bit longer because you want to make sure you're buying from a credible source. You would check out the testimonies that I referred to earlier on. You might you know, spend that little bit more time doing a bit of research. So it really does depend um, on the, the product and the price and the whole thing. But at a high level, you know, it, it's good to know the journey in itself. Absolutely. And like you are right, because, you know, if it's a small ticket item, there might be a quicker purchase, uh, uh, but if it's a big ticket item, we've got to think about these things. And just like exactly, and there, there's more things to consider, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and also, um, would there be much of a difference between B two B and B two C journeys? Yeah, good question. So high level, the concept is the same, but consumer buying is very much emotional driven, right? Like I spoke about the red pair of shoes, right? That would resonate with me. I'd be like, oh, I love them. I gotta have them. Um, or you and I with our paddle boards this summer, right? Um, we both saw that we lived in beautiful island uh, with great waterways. Why don't we, you know, grab this opportunity and get ourselves paddle boards? Um, so it's very much emotionally driven. The B2B buyer's journey then can be slightly longer because the sales process could be longer as well. And you may find that there are more people involved in the whole process. Um, so it's important that as a business, you, tone, you hone your messaging to suit each of the people who will be involved in the journey, in the sales cycle for you. Yeah. So for example, you might meet somebody initially who will actually be the end user of your product or service, but they may not be the person who's actually going to sign the contract on the dotted line. So you might need to just tweak your messaging uh, slightly so that, you know, you can bring everybody through that journey. So it's important as a business that you understand the cycle and you understand each phase in the cycle so that you can build your messaging to actually give your customers, your potential customers, the, the, the message they're looking for. 
Right. So, and I, I, I really understand that in, in B2B terms because, you know, the, 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 the distance between a, attracting interest and getting somebody to sign a contract in B2B, particularly on high ticket va uh, value items, our, our customers who have a, a high CLV, um, it, it takes a long time and it takes a lot of, a lot of uh, different points of contact. So that, that really resonates with me. It can be, it can be. And B2B, B2B selling is very much around relationships as well. So it's about building that relationship um, and earning trust. And it's mm. about building up your own uh, visibility, your own credibility, the credibility of your business, and then bringing, you know, bringing people through the fact that you can provide a solution to the problem they have. That's really good, Lisa. And I, I think it's, it's, you've just kind of laid it out very simply there about the journey. And you know, a lot of businesses can start thinking about how they bring their customers along the journey. So Lisa, uh, thanks a million for coming on today. Just before we go, can you give us your website and your email, just in case anybody wants to get in contact with you? Sure. Thanks so much, Paul. So uh, it's Lisa McPhillips from Dynamic Marketing. You can find me on dynamicmarketing.ie and you can find me at lisa.ie. And just to make things that little bit trickier, it's Lisa with two S's at dynamicmarketing.ie. That's great, Lisa. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me, Paul.